Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolfer Programming. I've got a lot of interesting PinePhone news for you guys. So today we're going to be talking about the PinePhone Pro. But a couple of channel updates first. Some people have been asking how can they contact me. In case I share somebody's source code or somebody's work. The best way uh, to keep track of all my social media is now at wolferprogramming.com. So here you can find links to my YouTube, um, my Mastodon account, I'm on Fostodon, which is my preferred method for you to communicate with me. This is where I'll announce my, um, my videos so that I can help support the Fediverse and grow that area of the internet. Some of you might use Twitter and I might make a Twitter, it, it feels like kind of Twitter concentrates the the um, you know the worst of our thoughts, but um, I might make one anyway and just kind of duplicate uh, thoughts on Twitter and the Fediverse. I'm also going to try to upload my videos on Odyssey for those that, for whatever reason, prefer to watch the videos there because it's on the blockchain, it's not YouTube, it's not Google, and a lot of people want to get away from Google. I try to post my content over on Reddit. And I will add more social media and some donation links if you guys feel so obliged uh, to throw some crypto my way. Alright, now that the channel updates are out of the way, let's get over to the PinePhone news. Well, really there's two things that uh, I have noticed. Um, after making my video uh, the other day about, <clears throat> about the camera, uh, somebody on my YouTube channel and I'll try to post in the description who that was. I'm, it's, I'm, uh, can't think of it at the moment. Mentioned that on Mobian, they had suspend working with audio on Wake. And so that means that the Pine phone could be daily drivable um, for a lot of people because that's, that's the big issue, right? You need the phone to be able to go to sleep and then wake up and answer phone calls and that was for me that was the biggest reason why I couldn't use the pine phone every day so I want to demonstrate that that is in fact at least for me working in Moby in, in my testing at least so here we have a song playing we're gonna pause it hopefully I won't get a copyright strike for that and we're gonna go over to the console and we're gonna trigger a manual suspend See if the camera can focus on that text. So now the phone is in suspend mode. We're going to wake it up from sleep. Sorry, those lights are kind of on the screen. Everything is still in the default. This is a pretty fresh install. We're going to switch back over to the music player. And we see the sound is working fine. Great news, right? So, if you want to use the Pine Phone as a daily driver, you know maybe you can find some way to get this to work on Arch or Manjaro. But for me, the way I had to do it, and I'll try to post instructions in the description, is that I had to install Mobian. And thanks to a hint from the comments on my previous YouTube video, I needed to install the kernel 5.19 Rock Chip. So. Audio is now working from Wake from Suspend, so the phone is getting very close to being daily drivable already. And something else that I don't think anybody else has commented on is now Flutter seems to have fixed all its bugs in Linux. Alright, so if you didn't know what Flutter is, Flutter is a UI framework developed by Google and the primary language that is used is Dart. And maybe you don't like Dart. Um, it's, you know, it's not a super popular language. It's kind of like, uh, if I want to describe it, it's, to me it looks a whole lot like Java. Um, but it's meant to sort of be a replacement to JavaScript. It's, um, it's got a lot of types. Uh, it has some null safety built in. It's not as fast as something like Golang. But um, it's, it's primarily, 
it's primarily designed to use in the UI world, similar to JavaScript. So it doesn't really compete with Golang or Java. Golang kind of competes with Java. It's more like a competition to, to JavaScript. And, you know, in many ways, it probably is an improvement to JavaScript. Well, anyway, I, I tested running Flutter. I, com I downloaded the latest Flutter for ARM64 today, and... It, uh, everything seems to be working fine. So kind of the showcase app I'm going to show off today is called Fluffy Chat. And Fluffy Chat, if you didn't know it, is a matrix client. What is matrix? It's a decentralized, federated chat protocol. Similar to XNMMP, which was done back in the day, mostly in XML, I think the, the Fluffy Chat is more JSON, so kind of a little more modern. A lot of, you know, it's kind of more popular to use JSON than XML. They're both really the same. JSON is... You know, to some people a little more readable. It's all you know. It gets kind of subjective, but um, it's a decentralized chat client. I really love the Matrix protocol. I think it's. Um, I think everyone needs to move to it from Discord. Uh, for whatever reason, you have um, it, it's decentralized, right? It's it's fairly easy to host your own instance of the Matrix protocol. Oops, went to sleep. But let's go ahead and get into it and show you um, Flutter while this is unlocking. You know, the reason I'm so excited about Flutter on mobile Linux is that, you know, one of the problems with having Linux as a mobile mobile ecosystem is that it doesn't have a whole lot of funding, right? So um, when you when you're uh, when you're trying to develop something as complicated as as an operating system, I'm trying to get out of this light, it's a little too bright. You really want to have a company that can fund the development of it, and um, and Google has really done all the work for us. And the and the nice thing about Flutter is that you build it up in Flutter, and generally you can compile it for Android, for iOS, or for Windows or for Linux desktop because it's basically painting the entire canvas on the screen for you. So, how can I explain that? Uh, for those that want to know more, it's basically they use the 2D rendering engine that is developed for Chrome, and they recycled that uh, to create an app library. So a lot of a lot of apps these days are built in what's called Electron, which ships an entire Chrome browser. Flutter, on the other hand, basically just ships the 2D rendering engine. So developing apps in Flutter are truly native. Flutter compiles to binary code, right? It's not transcompiled. So I don't know if you can see it and um, you know see it here, but it's extremely, extremely um, fast. It's it's smooth. It works very well. So this probably won't work on the OG Pine phone because I think you need OpenGL ES 3.1, where the original Pine phone just doesn't support that version of OpenGL. So it's a more recent version of OpenGL. So now we have access to the entire breadth of open source apps written in Flutter. I mean, that's huge, right? That opens up so many doors for mobile Linux. And Fluffy Chat is just one of the examples here. So before I had showed off Fluffy Chat and Flutter, and the problem was that the text wasn't opening correctly. But you see here now when I type, everything is um, coming out correctly. So I typed in the Pine Phone chat, and now I'm going to see. Let's see if I can delete it. Delete. Oh my god, this UI is so beautiful. So you can see that the UI is beautiful. It's very responsive. It's very quick. And this is free. This is going to be like your bet. This is this is better than any single chat client previously out for the Pine Phone, right? So this is absolutely going to, you know, UI-wise, responsiveness-wise, this is, you know... <laughs> in my opinion, a whole lot better than anything like, you know, the QT quick apps that have been coming out in the, you know, in the KD, in the KD libraries. I mean, I mean, that's great that we're getting those libraries as are open source, but one of the nice things about using Flutter is that you have, it's, it's, I think the license is MIT or Apache, something, it's a very nice library, so very nice license. So if you want to develop something in Flutter, there's really no strings attached. You can sell it, you can make it open source, there, there, there's nothing. You have no requirements as a developer, a software developer, to do anything, right? And that's, that's kind of what you want as a software developer. 
Like when, when I take a software license and it says I must do, you know, I must provide the sources or I must provide it in such a way that they can dynamically link it. It kind of limits me as a developer, right? What if I want to put this in the store or what if I'm not ready to share the source code yet? You know, um, those are, you know, and, you know, and generally, you know, maybe some people like well, all source code should be open source. And, you know, I think personally, I think that should be up to the user, whether you run open source or closed source. But anyway, whatever your thoughts are, I think it's good to have more options on the Pine phone in the mobile Linux ecosystem. And um, Flutter is going to give us hundreds, if not thousands, of apps to choose from. So really great mobile Linux news. We're going to have all those apps, all those different communication tools that we, you know, that we're used to in Android and iOS. Those are going to be automatically ported with basically zero work from the, the mobile Linux community. So those are the two great news I have for the Pine phone. Bad news I have, um, well, it's not really bad news for you guys, but bad news for me. The pins in my Pine phone Pro under the SIM card are now broken. <laughs> so I bought the development unit, the development Pine phone Pro. The new Pine phone Pro when it gets into beta status is going to have the micro SIM card slot. And I'll go ahead and show a picture here of my pins. The development unit, the pins are very sensitive and you, you know, if you have the development version of the Pine phone Pro, you really need to be careful about inserting SIM cards in and out. In my case, even before 30 days were over, some of the pins had already broken, I, but I really wanted to support Pine 64, so I, I didn't return it, I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, ask for a replacement, and I kind of regret it now because I tried, after I saw the wake from uh, sleep working, I tried putting a SIM card in, and the, uh, one of the pins just completely fell off, so I'm not going to be able to test any more Pine Phone Pro wake from sleep, and receiving calls anymore because this is the only pine phone pro i have i don't have enough funds at the moment or probably for the foreseeable future of buying another pine phone pro so i am uh, i did open up some tickets with pine phone hopefully they'll let me buy just the motherboard i didn't see any motherboards in stock if any of you guys know anyone at pine 64 that could hook me up with a new pine phone pro motherboard or um help me out with my ticket that would be a huge favor to me because I would love to make more videos and um, do more research on developing apps for you know mobile Linux and and uh, Pine phones in general. So, but that's all I have for you guys today. I think that's really exciting for mobile Linux news. We have Flutter completely working. We have Wake from Sleep completely working. If you guys want Flutter on your Pine phone, let me know down in the comments and I could make a script to automatically install it for you guys so it would pull down the latest Flutter engine, install the dependencies, um, give you an icon like I have on my Pine phone. I had to kind of do a lot of that manually. It's actually a, a pretty complicated manual process. Let me know if you guys want an install script to install Fluffy Chat or any Flutter apps I can try to test out for you guys. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been Wolf4Programming. Uh, have a great day.